Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV. And in this video, I wanna take a look at Tesla's partnership with Panasonic to make the 18650 and the 2170 cell. In this video, I'll look to address two questions that I have about this partnership. Number one is, will we see the end of Tesla's exclusive partnership with Panasonic? And two, will Tesla buy out Panasonic's Gigafactory investment of $1.6 billion and move battery cell production in-house. But first, I want to start off with an early timeline. When did this relationship between Tesla and Panasonic begin? In order to understand the dynamic between the two companies, you have to go all the way back to July 21st, 2009, when Tesla and Panasonic signed an initial supply agreement. And in that agreement, it says, this agreement shall commence on the effective date and unless terminated as set forth in section 15, shall end on December 31st, 2010. This agreement, however, shall be automatically extended from year to year for additional one year periods, unless one party gives a written notice of termination to the other parties at least 60 days before the expiration date of the initial term or then current term. The effective period of this agreement is referred to as the term. And then in November 2010, Panasonic upped the ante by investing $30 million in common stock. October 11, 2011, Tesla and Panasonic extended their supply agreement with battery cells for 80,000 vehicles over a four year period. This agreement was meant to solidify the partnership between the two companies so that Tesla could begin production of their full-size luxury sedan, the Model S, which started official production in around September of 2012. While Tesla was continuing to make the Model S and before they started production of the Model X, on February 26, 2014, Tesla officially announced their plans to build a Gigafactory. This Gigafactory was designed to produce the battery cells that not only go into the Model S, but Model X, Model 3, energy storage products, as well as future vehicles and products. In their PDF, a part of the announcement, they projected that 2020 Tesla vehicle volume would be around half a million cars per year. The Gigafactory cell output would be 35 gigawatt hours per year and the pack output 50 gigawatt hours per year. They also provided a very insightful Gigafactory process flow where they indicated what that process process looks like from raw materials to the manufacturing of the battery cells, building of the modules, as well as the pack. By the end of Q2 2014, Tesla had produced around 40,000 Model S. And at that time, that was enough for Panasonic to have a high level of confidence that Tesla was on their way to a successful production of a vehicle. On July 21st, 2014, Tesla and Panasonic signed an agreement to partner together to help build Gigafactory 1. They say in that statement that Tesla will prepare, provide, and manage the land, buildings, and utilities. Panasonic will manufacture and supply cylindrical lithium-ion cells and invest in the associated equipment, machinery, and other manufacturing tools based on their mutual approval. A network of suppliers is planned to produce the required precursor materials. Tesla will take the cells and other components to assemble battery modules and packs. To meet the projected demand for cells, Tesla will continue to purchase battery cells produced in Panasonic's factories in Japan. There's a few other interesting points from this press release that I want to highlight. The Gigafactory will be managed by Tesla with Panasonic joining as the principal partner responsible for lithium ion battery cells and occupying approximately half the plant manufacturing space. Key suppliers combined with Tesla's module and pack assembly will comprise the other half of this fully integrated industrial complex. Not long after that announcement in July of 2014, Tesla begins construction of that Sparks Nevada location where they're to build that Gigafactory 1. On March 21st, 2016, Tesla unveils the Model 3, which is a significant mark in this timeline towards building the Gigafactory because all battery cells for the Model 3 will be produced at Gigafactory 1 in that 2170 form factor. 
July 30th, 2016, Tesla finally unveils a portion of the Gigafactory at an event in Sparks, Nevada. They claimed in that presentation that when the Gigafactory is fully running at that 35 gigawatt hours per year, that they will themselves produce more battery cells than all other producers of battery combined. Tesla officially began production of their Model 3 in Q3 of 2017. It did, however, take them a while to ramp up. One of the things that was keeping them from full production was Panasonic's ability to keep up with battery cell demand. Panasonic takes the fall for this lag in production at a general shareholders meeting that a pickup in production of Model 3 has resulted in occasional battery cell shortages. In August of 2018, Tesla says they are at 20 gigawatt hours per year of cell production with a goal to get to 35 gigawatt hours per year by the end of 2018. The following month in September, Panasonic says they will add three more cell lines to a total of 13 by the end of the year. Yoshiro Ito, head of Panasonic's automotive business, says, the bottleneck for Model 3 production has been our batteries. They just want us to make as many as possible. So this is really, really telling because July 2018, August, and September, Panasonic is saying they are the weak link and they need to pick up the production to meet Tesla's objectives. On November 2nd, 2018, Elon responds to a question on Twitter regarding where the battery cells will come from for their Shanghai Gigafactory 3. Elon says that they will source batteries locally from companies, including Panasonic, but they also mention a different battery cell supplier for the very first time, Lishan Battery. Lishan is a heavy hitter. They have clients like Apple, Samsung, Geely, who makes Volvo, as well as Hyundai. This mention of working with other battery cell providers could have been the beginning of the end. You'll see why here in just a moment. On January 21st, 2019, Panasonic and Toyota announced a partnership for Prismatic batteries. And to my knowledge, this is the very first time that Panasonic has officially announced a formal partnership with another large automaker. Not long after this January 21st Panasonic Toyota announcement, Maxwell Technologies comes into play on February 4th, 2019 by stating that they have entered into a merger with Tesla. This announcement for Tesla to acquire Maxwell Technologies is a pretty big deal and the timing is really interesting because though Maxwell has been known for their super capacitors that they've made for many, many decades, they figured out how to take that dry battery electro technology that they've been using for the super caps and apply them to lithium ion batteries. The strained relationship between Panasonic and Tesla frays a little bit more in April. On April 11th, 2019, the Nikkei reports that Panasonic will not be making any new investments in Gigafactory 1 in Nevada, as well as Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai. Two days later, on April 13th, Elon Musk says Panasonic is only producing 24 gigawatt hours per year. He said on Twitter, incorrect, Panacell's at Giga are only at about 24 gigawatt hours per year and have been a constraint on Model 3 output since July. No choice but to use other suppliers for Powerwall, Powerpack cells. Tesla won't spend money on more capacity until existing lines get closer to the 35 gigawatt hour theoretical. In that same Twitter thread, Elon continues by saying that there is a 35 gigawatt hour per year quote, theoretical capacity, end quote, but actual max output is about two thirds. It was physically impossible to make more Model 3s in Q1 due to cell constraints. And the last and most recent part of this development on April 24th, Panasonic is said to be considering converting Japanese 18650 lines to 2170 for Model 3 to go into effect March 2020. So here are my takeaways from analyzing this timeline of the relationship with 
Panasonic and Tesla. Panasonic clearly has been the lag, the weak link in this production process for Model 3 since July of 2018. It's for that reason that I think Tesla started to look elsewhere for additional providers. Now, I don't think that Panasonic is completely out of the picture. However, I do think that it's a good thing that Tesla is diversifying their cell producers for their vehicles. One of the other interesting mental exercises is to go down the road of if Panasonic isn't making any further investments in Gigafactory 1 in Nevada, who is and what will happen? This leads me to another question, which is how will Tesla implement Maxwell Technologies into the mix? If Maxwell's claims are true, their dry battery electro tech will increase production capacity by 16x and a 10 to 20% cost reduction. This means higher output of making more efficient use of manufacturing space with a higher profit margin for Tesla. So if Tesla can execute on Maxwell Technologies cost reduction and production increase, it might be something that is possible here in the short term. But part of me wonders how much validation is needed on Maxwell Technologies DBE. I am a little bit divided on this idea of Tesla buying out Panasonic's investment into Giga One and going truly vertical. That being said, it does make for an interesting window here since Tesla has raised that $2.7 billion of capital. Tesla should be closing on that Maxwell deal sometime this month, mid-month. So it could make sense for Tesla to just go fully integrated with cell production, knowing how much that Panasonic has been the weak link in this cell production process. Perhaps Panasonic has known that Tesla is going this direction, and that is why they have aligned themselves a little bit more closely with Toyota to produce battery cells. What do you guys think? Do you think it's possible? I know some of you do, some of you don't, but I would love to hear in the comments down below. Thank you so much for your time and attention in watching this video. A huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for throwing me some cash. If you did find this video valuable and you've got some extra cash laying around, it takes a lot of time to investigate and research these videos. So if you can support, great. If not, it would mean a lot if you would give the video a like and a subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see everyone on the next video.